So the Supreme Court issued a new 6-3 decision which completely shook up a critical issue between the state of Texas and the Biden administration over the border. And now two way organizations are jumping in to support Texas. So let's talk about what is happening in this court battle. Also wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is My Patriot Supply. I'm not a doomsday prepper by any means, but like many of you, I prepare for the worst case scenarios. That includes stocking up firearms, ammo, water, and also emergency food. One of the companies that I've used that I've used to buy emergency food even before they became a sponsor of this channel was in fact My Patriot Supply. Their kits offer about 2,000 calories every day plus a 25 year shelf life, storage life, so you don't have to worry about that food. And if you're just getting started with emergency food and purchasing this type of item, I'd recommend the three month emergency food kits. It's just enough you know, to actually dip your toes into this type of you know, preparing. It's one of their best sellers and it can actually help you decide if you wanna go even further. So if you're interested, you can order and you can go to the website preparewitharmscholar.com and if you use that link that is going to be linked down below in the details section and also in the pinned comment, you can get $200 off and also free shipping. As I mentioned in the intro in this video, we need to talk about a new decision recently issued by the Supreme Court, which is now being used to support Texas in the dispute over the border. The state of Texas is using this decision to support their right to self-defense and a couple weeks ago, the Supreme Court issued a six to three decision in a case called Labrador versus Poe. That decision placed limitations on lower courts, essentially granting overbroad and universal relief in cases like this one. That decision is now being used by the state of Texas in the US versus state of Texas case to strike down the universal block by a lower court that they placed against SB4. The Biden administration and multiple consolidated plaintiffs are fighting desperately to avoid this new Supreme Court decision from being applied against them in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And now things are getting even more interesting because multiple two-way organizations like GOA, Gun Owners of California, Tennessee Farms Foundation, and others are jumping in to support Texas. So we need to do some background on this case so you understand what the Supreme Court's order was and what impact it is now currently having on SB4 in Texas. Texas SB4 effectively makes it a crime by crossing into Texas at any location other than a lawful point of entry. It also makes it a further crime for the illegal re-entry by a person who has already been removed from the state of Texas. Finally, the law also allows judges in the state of Texas to issue orders that then require that individual to go back to the foreign nation where they came from. This bill was challenged by the Biden administration and a district court on review issued a preliminary injunction which prevented Texas from enforcing all of SB4. The lower court there placed a universal preliminary injunction against SB4 and it broadly blocks the enforcement of SB4. Texas appealed that preliminary injunction up to the Fifth Circuit and they wanted the Fifth Circuit to issue an administrative stay on that lower court's universal order. And ultimately what happened is the Fifth Circuit did issue an administrative stay which blocked that universal order. Now various cases were then consolidated and then the plaintiffs filed for Supreme Court emergency intervention. And here's where the Supreme Court originally got involved. They asked for the Supreme Court to step in early and remove that administrative state that was put in place by the Fifth Circuit. Effectively, if the Supreme Court did that, if they removed that administrative stay, the universal block would go back in place. Well, then we received an order from the Supreme Court, which in fact denied the Biden administration's request to vacate that administrative state. So the Supreme Court sided with the state of Texas. But then what happened after that, after the case was sent back down to the Fifth Circuit, interestingly, on their own, the Fifth Circuit three-judge panel in this case then decided to remove their own administrative state. That effectively meant that what ended up happening is the Biden administration could then once again enforce that universal block of SB4 and SB4 would be halted. Then just a few days later after that, the Fifth Circuit heard oral arguments on whether or not they would actually grant a preliminary injunction on their own in favor of the Biden administration. And currently we are waiting for a decision on the actual preliminary injunction from the Fifth Circuit. Now from the arguments, it sounded like the Fifth Circuit would still issue a two to one order in favor of the Biden administration. So again, it sounded like there would be maybe a universal injunction issued by the Fifth Circuit on their own against SB4, continuing to block the enforcement of SB4. But during those arguments, there were some concerns about if the US government can actually seek this type of universal equitable relief against the state of Texas. There was a lot of dispute during the hearings and the arguments, especially from some of the dissenting judges like Judge Oldham, 
who agreed with Texas that the government cannot simply just file this type of lawsuit and get this type of broad reaching universal injunction against the state of Texas. Well, then just a couple weeks after that hearing, after that SB4 hearing and some of the concerns about universal forms of relief, like what was issued by the lower court, well, then the Supreme Court issued a new 6-3 emergency decision. It was on an emergency application order and that was in the Labrador case. And it answered a lot of the questions about this type of universal relief. In that case, the Supreme Court stated that lower courts should not issue universal preliminary injunctions, which go beyond the scope of relief, which would actually cure the injury of only the named plaintiffs. Essentially, the Supreme Court said that the lower courts in a lot of other jurisdictions should move back to the principle of simply granting more limited relief instead of universal injunctions. Now, in the concurring opinion, Justice Gorsuch stated that, Ordinarily, injunctions like these may go no further than necessary to provide interim relief to the parties. In this case, however, the district court went much further, prohibiting a state from enforcing any aspect of its duly enacted law against anyone. Today, the court stays the district court's injunction to the extent it applies to non-parties, which is to say to the extent it provides universal relief. That is a welcome development. Now, what this statement means right there is that universal statewide and likely nationwide preliminary injunction relief is improper according to the Supreme Court going forward. The state like Texas here is using that decision to try to eliminate the universal block that was issued by the lower court against their Texas law in the SB4 lawsuit. In their letter, the state of Texas states that in Labrador, the court stayed a pre-enforcement facial injunction of an Idaho law with a majority questioning the propriety of non-party statewide injunctions. Labrador confirms such an extraordinary order raises serious federalism and separation of power concerns and has no rooting in traditional equity practice. Now, of course, the federal government is fighting back desperately against this use of the new Supreme Court order there in the Labrador case and is fighting against it being used against them. In the response, the federal government argues that as long as they are a named plaintiff, you know, in this lawsuit, as long as the United States is a named plaintiff, they can get this type of broad reaching universal blocks against something like SB4. In essence, the federal government wants to essentially argue that they have special status and they can be treated differently when it comes to universal preliminary injunctions. So that is kind of the backdrop of what is now developed with Labrador and where this case is now moving forward and the arguments that are happening in the Fifth Circuit. And now, interestingly, you have a bunch of two-way organizations like Gun Owners of California, Gun Owners of America, Tennessee Firearms Foundation, and others who are jumping in. They're filing amicus briefs in support of the state of Texas in support of their right to self-defense. Now, in their briefs, they argue that, of course, the state of Texas has a right to self-defense under the Constitution and that this broad-reaching preliminary injunction that was issued by the lower court was incorrect and violates the Constitution. In their brief, they state that, lest there be any doubt that the states retain sovereign power to defend their borders, even to the point of waging war, the invasion clause expressly reserves that power to the states. They go on to state that there is nothing expressed or implied in this clause that indicates that short of waging war, the state's inherent power to defend its border is limited in the absence of an invasion. Thus, this case does not turn on whether there was a military invasion into Texas. What the two-way organizations then go on to argue is that states like Texas under the Constitution have the ability to defend their borders against multiple different types of invasions. But the language here in the Constitution does not limit you know, the right to self-defense of states to protect their borders to only military invasions. In simple terms, the terms that are used in that text just simply says invasions and an imminent danger to the state in a way that they must react immediately without going to Congress. This broader use of language means that Texas is doing the proper thing here. They're protecting their borders. You know, there doesn't need to be an actual military invasion. The text talks about invasion broadly and imminent dangers broadly. And here the state of Texas is reacting to an invasion and you know, imminent dangers. And the lower court's universal injunction blocking those actions violates the constitution, but also that recent Supreme Court order that was directly saying that these types of universal injunctions are improper. 
So this is a really important development in this case. You know, it's interesting that two organizations are also jumping in to support the state of Texas. You know, you have new Supreme Court orders in that 63 Labrador case, which also supports striking down this universal injunction, which is blocking SB4. We're gonna have to see what the Fifth Circuit says about all this. You know, there was already some interest in, you know, maybe going against a universal injunction. At least one of the judges has concerns about that. Well, then you have the Supreme Court issue this new order. But here, the Biden administration is desperately fighting against that Labrador case being used in this lawsuit. So things are definitely getting interesting. If anything else develops, if anything else changes in this lawsuit, I will let you guys know. Also, if you guys like this video and you like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All of those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But regardless, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.